Hi class, I want to do a quick video to kind of show you what is meant by absolute cell reference and kind of the differences between a regular cell reference and an absolute cell reference, and then kind of how to use the autofill for you. This is going to be extremely helpful for our topic three, DQ2. Um, it could have been helpful on the other Excel assignments, but it is really going to be helpful on this one. Okay, so this is our template. So when you open it up, one thing I want you to notice is that if you click on the cells that are already completed, you can see their formula that is already inputted. And so what they've done is they've taken that cell A2 times B2 times C3. All right, so what they did here is they took these dollar signs and they put them in with their cell reference. These dollar signs are what we mean by absolute cell reference. So when you do a cell reference, and if you are to do an autofill with your cell reference, Excel will try to notice the pattern you're doing, and it will try to continue on with the pattern. And so a lot of times what happens with this is if you want to constantly be multiplying by the cell A2, and you don't want to continue multiplying by cells all the way down to A27, you can use this absolute cell reference to kind of lock in that cell A. So the dollar signs mean that I'm going to always use that cell A2, and I will always use the cell B2, but C3 I'm going to allow to float. And then you can see if you look down here, they have the same thing. Okay, so now let's do a cell autofill. So what that means is you get your formula looking nice. You have it the way you want it. So what you can do is you can see this little square box down in the bottom right of the cell. If we click on that and hold and we drag it all the way down, it will autofill our formula in. So now you can see if we click on this bottom one, it is still referencing A2, it is still referencing B2, but it changed to reference C28, which is a 30, instead of saying, staying up there at C3. Okay, now let's say you forgot the dollar signs. So let's see how that changes things. So let me clear this out. Okay, so let's say in my formula, I did not put the dollar signs in and I just went ahead and did A2 times B2 times C3. So let me clear this out. I'm gonna do A2 times B2 times C3. And I'll hit enter. Okay, so we have a good start. That was the value we had before, so that's good to go. Now let's autofill and see what happens when we autofill. So I click that square, the bottom right. I drag it all the way down to 30. Nothing happened. It did not give me numbers here. So what happened here is we did not lock in that A2 and that B2 cell. So in our first equation, everything's fine. We take A2 times B2 times C3. But if you look at the next one, what Excel did is instead of doing A2, they did A3, B3, and then C4. See how it's gradually moving down on this left-hand side as we go? So if we go into the next cell, Hit enter, go into the next cell. This one is referencing A4 and B4. The next cell, we now have A5, B5. So since we did not lock in those, um, those cells, we didn't lock those in, Excel is going to autofill and they're going to think you need to keep progressing down through everything. So we're going to keep increasing the rows as we move through the columns. So as we scroll down here to the 30, it's going to keep increasing down the rows for that principal value and that rate, which is not what we want. So the way to fix this is you can lock in that A2 and that B2. You lock it in by putting a dollar sign in front of the A and a dollar sign in front of the 2. The dollar sign in front of the A locks in that column A. The dollar sign in front of the two locks in row two. If you only wanted to lock in your row, then you only need to put a dollar sign in front of the two. If you only wanna lock in the column, then you only need to put a dollar sign in front of that A. And then we also wanna lock in that rate. So we'll do the same thing. So we'll put our dollar signs in B2 as well. And then this will fix our problem. So if we get that nice and pretty with our dollar signs, we take this and we autofill all the way down to 30. Now you can see that when we get down to 30, we are still referencing A2, B2, instead of moving all the way down here and referencing A27, B27. 
use those dollar signs to help you. They come in handy a lot. They are going to be useful when you are referencing a constant cell throughout the entire table. So if you're going to do autofill and you want to reference the same cell throughout the entire table, you want to make sure you put those dollar signs in it.